Welcome to Swanee Church of Christ uh, midweek service uh, over Zoom. So thank you for taking time and, and doing so. Uh, today is an exciting midweek. Uh, we have a great lineup with uh, Brother Solly Malaza, who's going to be preaching from the Gospel of Mark. Uh, for those of, of visiting, uh, we've, we've been in the New Testament. Uh, starting in August 1st, and we we reading through the New Testament in 120 days. And so we have different preachers who are going to take sections of the reading for that week and preach on it. And so today, uh, Sally is going to be in the Gospel of Mark, and so I'm really excited. Uh, and so before we have him come on, uh, I want to just share uh, two announcements um, that events that are coming up. And then uh, Mabatu is, uh, is going to open up in a word of prayer. And then Sally is going to come and uh, preach through the Gospel of Mark. Uh, so the first announcement is the marriage devotional that's happening this uh, Saturday, the 21st of August, from 1.30 to 2.30 p.m. So, Ronald, I'm not sure if you have the invite uh, that you can share your screen and show people. Uh, but it's titled Loneliness. There it is, loneliness, friendship, and fun. And uh, the exciting news is we're going to have Arujo and his wa uh, wife, Valeria, uh, doing this devotional. At, and a lot of us know Arujo, and so it's really would be exciting to see him and his wife uh, do this lesson. Uh, the other announcement, uh, it's a prayer request. The Swanee Campus Ministry, uh, and I just want to uplift uh, Abigail and Moses. Uh, they have um, they had the vision and they prayed and they pulled together a team and they've done a wonderful job uh, organizing in all Africa campus devotional. So that's so exciting to see uh, our very own campus ministry uh, doing the legwork and the hard work. And definitely, again, one of the uplift Moses and Abigail for, um, as you can imagine, this is a huge scale project. And they, are, they, they joyfully uh, took on the challenge. And this Saturday is going to be the devotional. So please, if you can pray, uh, God does amazing things through this. Pray the technology um, is all working out uh, just the way uh, planned. Um, so we also have French speaking and Portuguese speaking campus ministries joining this devotional. So we are actually going to be doing some translation and Zoom has this feature and it's quite technical. Thankfully, Moses is very technically minded. So please, be, please pray that all of that works out. So the campus students from across Africa, across languages and, uh, and, and cultures and so on can just congregate virtually and have an amazing time. So those are the two events. Um, join the marriage and then be, be praying for the campus devotional. That'd be wonderful. So before we um, continue, I'm about to please, if you could open us up in a word of prayer before Solly comes to preach. Thank you. Okay. Um, good evening, church. Um, hope all of you are well. Um, yeah, we can open up in a word of prayer. Dear Father, we are blessed, Father God. We are grateful to have this uh, time once again to just come before your throne, dear God. Father, as we are about, Father God, to have this service, we invite you, we invite your Holy Spirit that you please be with us, be with our hearts, dear God, and help us to receive the word that will be preached today, dear God. Father, we pray, Father, for everyone that is here today and everyone that is not able to join, that you'll continue protecting us, dear Lord. Father, we are grateful. We pray everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good evening, church. Uh, good evening, friends and family that uh, have joined us uh, this evening for midweek service. Uh, amen. Yeah, it is actually it is truly exciting, you know, uh, going through the the New Testament in 120 days. Uh, I must say, however, that I'm a bit behind because I had to uh, prepare from last week for uh, for for today's devotional lesson. But it is just amazing uh, what God and the Holy Spirit through the Scriptures 
uh, how he has revealed himself, revealed his mission, just seeing, uh, just seeing the Messiah come up, you know, from the scriptures, and just also seeing that, um, um, you know, because we all have different perception about how God works, about who is Jesus, and we at times we have a misplaced understanding of who God is and how God works. But just to, as one goes through, you know, uh, uh, through uh, the New Testament, I've also have seen myself how I have in my own life with my own, with my preconceived ideas, you know, influenced by how I was brought up, you know, uh, in Mami Lori, my family, how I was brought up as a young disciple, you know, in the church, that how somehow even myself, like the crowd and, and, and the disciples of Jesus, that at times I have misplaced uh, Jesus and I have misplaced how God works. And the scriptures somehow really calling me back, you know, to what God is doing and to what Jesus he is all about. Amen. I have a, I've titled to, uh, tonight's devotional lesson, What Do You See? Um, we will pick up reading uh, from the book of Mark chapter 8, verse 27. Uh, to think that's where we will pay attention but it, like i said it is just been amazing you know to, uh, uh, you know through the script that you know jesus has been going around doing the things that people thought the messiah would yet many you know uh, do not did not get it and and many refused jesus as the messiah many refused uh, jesus as the son of god even the disciples themselves that who are walking with Jesus did not see him as the Messiah, nor understood several times. It is just, and the question is, but is it why, why is Mark including this somehow odd story of Jesus healing a blind man in between two passages that speaks of the inability or the ability of disciples to understand Jesus? And we are going to focus on that together. But why did Mark put this uh, precisely? So the Bible teaches in Mark chapter 8, verse 27 uh, to 30. I'll be reading from the NIV version. The Bible teaches, then they came to, uh, to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spit on the man's eyes, he put his hands on him. Jesus asked, do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees. Sorry, pardon me. Uh, why is, excuse me, why, Siri? I... So, sorry, pardon me, Papa. He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. Once more, Jesus put his hand on, on the man's eye. Then his eyes were opened. His sight were, was restored and he saw everything clearly. Jesus sent him away saying, do not go into the village. Jesus and his disciples went to a, uh, to a village around uh, Caesarea uh, of um, in Philippi. On their way, he asked them, what do people say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. But what about you? He asked, who do you say I am? Peter answered, you are the Christ. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. But I mean, I, I, I want us to, later on, we will look uh, in the book of Matthew about how Matthew has captured Jesus' response uh, to Peter's revelation. You know, as, as Jesus, you know, uh, you know, arrives, you know, uh, on the, uh, uh, from the other towns, you know, uh, people rush to him. As he arrives in Bethsaida, they, are they bring this blind man to Jesus. They are begging him to heal him. So Jesus takes this man outside of the, I mean, of the village. I do not understand why, why he could not do it right there. But, but amen, that is the topic from some other time. Jesus then spits on his eyes places uh, his hand, seemingly heals him. But we find out that something is wrong here. The man says that he can see, but not in the right way. He says, I see people, 
they look like trees walking around. I mean, I can imagine how trees look like walking around. You know, after putting his hand on the man for a second time, he can see clearly. But what just had, what just had happened here? Is Jesus experiencing load shedding? Why was he unable to heal this man for the first time? Because he has done that in the past. And at times he has healed people by just saying a word. But this time seeming that, I mean, he needed to heal this person uh, twice for the miracle to take place. In fact, this is the only miracle recorded in any of the gospel in which Jesus must perform and act twice to complete one miracle. But the original question is, why does Mark include this strange story here in the middle of the discussion of who Jesus is? You know, this blind man church had some contact with Jesus, yet he still couldn't fully see. He needed to re-engage with Jesus. You know, even the disciples, you know, several times Jesus have, has done miracles and wonders. I mean, uh, 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 a few verses before uh, uh, we get here, they, you know, Jesus is talking about uh, 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 the yeast of the, of, the, of the Pharisees, and they are not getting it. They are thinking it's because uh, they forgot to bring more bread for lunch and so forth. And Jesus tells them that, don't you still get it? Don't you still see? But what happens when this, when this blind man re-engages with Jesus, he finally receives his sight fully. He sees clearly. He sees right. You know, Jesus does all these miracles for the disciples, but they still do not get it. And the reason is because they needed to re-engage with Jesus. They needed to be touched. If you look through the Gospels, you see Jesus touching his disciples several, several times for them to get it. You know, my brothers and sisters, you know, church, for us to understand and to see who Jesus, who Jesus is, we need to consistently re-engage with, with Jesus. You know, I love uh, how Matthew gives, um, uh, gives the account of Jesus' I mean, uh, response. You know, uh, Jesus asked, uh, uh, asked, who do people say, I mean, uh, who do people say I am? After doing so many miracles, after people, you know, uh, seeing Jesus does wonders, meeting their, their needs, some they say, man, uh, uh, he's John the Baptist. You know, even Herod, when he basically asked Herod Antipas, when he, when he heard about the amazing things that Jesus was doing, even Herod thought it, it, it is John, uh, John the Baptist has, has risen from the dead. You know, people said that, no, some are saying, I mean, he is Elijah. And still some are saying that he's, he's one of the prophets. And Jesus turns to the disciples and says, what about you? Who do you say I am? And Peter says, you are Christ. You are the Messiah. And, and Jesus in his response to Peter's revelation, he says in, in Matthew 16, verse, verse 17, um, he says, you are blessed son of John because my father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human beings. You know, my brothers and sisters, when we consistently re-engage with Jesus, we begin to see what God wants us to see. We see what Jesus is doing. We remember what Jesus had done and we listen with our hearts. When we consistently re-engage with Jesus, we have faith in Jesus. We have faith in him. You know, Jesus' mission becomes our mission. But the question is that, uh, how do we re-engage re with, with Jesus? I know for me, church, you know, spending time consistently with God in his word, that's how I re-engage with Jesus. 
you know, spending time uh, with God in prayer, conversing with him. That's how I re-engage with Jesus. You know, being in the fellowship of the believers, being in the community, being active in the community, that's how I re-engage with Jesus. Are you re-engaging with Jesus? Yes, we may have been baptized and our sins may have been forgiven. We may have received the Holy Spirit. But we see that even the disciples, when Jesus had called them to follow him, he had to call, he had to constantly perform miracles to reveal himself to them. He had to constantly re-engage with them to see that Jesus, he is the Messiah. Our walk with God, it is vital for us to re-engage with Jesus. It is essential for us seeing Jesus for who he is. If you want to know who, who Jesus is, we have to re-engage with him. We have to invest in our Bible study. We have to invest in prayer. We have to invest in the mission of Jesus. We have to invest in our fellowship with one another. We have to consistently re-engage with Jesus. You know, the disciples still don't have everything figured out. As much as Peter, you know, the disciples, they, I mean, uh, the Holy Spirit, God has revealed to him this, but they still haven't got things figured out because as you read further in the Gospels, uh, you can see that you know, the way they are behaving, they, I mean, they, I mean they, prefer, they get in the boat, Jesus, he is asleep, there's waves, I mean, they are panicking, they want to die, you know, that they ask Jesus an odd question, don't you care that, that, you know, that we will die? Right now, the, it has been revealed who Jesus is, but I still believe that they still need, this is not the second touch, but it is one of the second touch. There's many times where Jesus needs to, to touch them. They need to re-engage with Jesus. You know, this understanding that Jesus is the Messiah, it is not only the, the disciples uh, uh, grasping that Jesus is divine, but is them understanding that Jesus is the true King of Israel. You know, in claiming him to be the Messiah, they are naming the Jewish leaders, Herod Antipas, and the others like him as imposters. No one was expecting the no one was expecting a divine redeemer of a mankind. And I think to some extent, the, uh, uh, the Jewish community, they are still battling with this, accepting Jesus as the Messiah accepting Jesus as the son of God. They were looking for a king and the disciples have finally found him. But to this point, Jesus' behavior has been strange. He's been, he's been unking-like. He's not been behaving like the king that they've been expecting. So this revelation was probably a bit of relief for them. Now they think they understand who Jesus is, and Jesus, and Jesus is announcing his kingdom. He's confirming his kingship. But I still believe in one sense that this is the second touch, and the disciples finally, finally get it. But in many ways, this is the first touch. They didn't really see at all before. Now they can see but not yet as clearly as they will when they receive, when Jesus is glorified, when they receive the gift of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. You know, the understanding for them that uh, Jesus is the Messiah changes things. You know, a Messiah that was announcing God's kingdom was directly challenging the Jewish leadership in Rome. Things were about to change for Jesus and his disciples as they approach Jerusalem. And the disciples, is amazing that they see the miracles and things that Jesus had been doing, and they realize that all of this 
is pointing to Jesus, the Messiah, and he's announcing his kingdom. You know, uh, not all the Jews wanted or were really expecting a Messiah, but those who were expecting him, there were three things that they were expecting from him, that the Messiah will rebuild at the temple, that he will defeat the enemies of God, and he will bring God's justice to Israel, and then the world around Israel. But Jesus is going around doing these things that people thought the Messiah would, but in a radical different way, and people don't get it because they have their own perception of who the Messiah, of who the Son of God is. But at this point, the place the disciples, they are finally grasping it. They realize he is the Messiah with a new way of doing things. Just what ways is he? It is yet to fully emerge. But what we see more than anything here, my brothers and sisters, is that you and I, we, we need to constantly re-engage with Jesus. When you and I, we constantly re-engage with Jesus, God reveals himself to us through his word. You know, it is amazing for me that uh, uh, in Matthew, Jesus says uh, 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 to, uh, to, uh, to Simon, uh, son, of, son of John Peter, he says, this it is not revealed to you by men. This is not revealed to you by men. But my brothers and sisters, I can never, I can never, I don't know how to explain this to us. And I don't want to downplay uh, us, you know, uh, attending devotionals. I don't want us to, I don't want to downplay, you know, uh, about fundis, preaching and things. But my brothers, we re-engage. God reveals himself when you and I really engage with his word. When you receive God's word, not as a second or as a secondary, not as a secondary message, not as a, uh, uh, for uh, someone's insight, but when you directly sit down and you ask God in your terms that my father, I'm going to spend time in your word right now. I ask that you may you please open my eyes so that I may see you in your scriptures. I ask my Lord that you will reveal yourself to me through your word, through your Holy Spirit. I ask my God that this morning, this afternoon, today, this evening, that I will see in the scriptures what you desire for me to see. It is amazing when you and I, we are humble, we are, we are earnest in our prayers to see God. God reveals himself through, the, through his scriptures. You know, things that you and I have seen in the past and we didn't pay attention, suddenly things jump out from the scriptures and they move us. And at times we get excited because we have now somehow discovered this. I mean, I've seen Matthew 28 and in, for so many years and, and I discovered, and then we get so excited with God because God has revealed himself through his word. And my brothers and sisters, the only way that you and I, we can re-engage with God, it's when you and I, we re-engage with him directly with his word, through the Holy Spirit, through our walk with him in prayer. Then God reveals to us who Jesus is. And God reveals to us what Jesus' mission is. You know, many of us like me, we may have preconceived ideas about Jesus and God and how it works, but I'm learning and by God's grace and praise be to God, I've learned and I've seen, you know, over the years that how I've misplaced God and how I've misplaced his love for me because of my, uh, my history, because of my experience, you know, because of, you know, at times I've gone, I mean, I mean, I mean I've gone to the Bible with agendas and I have missed who Jesus is. I've missed who God is. What is it about Jesus or about his kingdom today that you still do not understand? What area of your life have you not turned over to Jesus? Just as the blind man 
and the disciples found that if they allow him, if they allow Jesus to touch them, if they engage with Jesus again and again, and he helped, he helped them to understand and he opened their eyes and they realized that Jesus is the Messiah they've been hoping for, they've been waiting for. That Jesus is the true King of Israel. That Jesus is the true King in God's kingdom. And my prayers, yeah, my prayer, my brothers and sisters, that I mean, this evening, that you and I spiritually, wherever we are, that like the blind man, we, we will engage, we will go back to Jesus, whatever it takes, if he needs to touch us. I believe for me that Jesus will touch me until I go to the grave. I believe that I, I need that, you know, that I need to re-engage with Jesus until I die because each and every single day, uh, I mean, it's amazing how God, God is opening my eyes in realizing uh, Jesus, in realizing how God works. And I pray that like me, many of us will continuously go back to Jesus and ask Jesus to touch us. Amen. To God be the glory. Let's pray. My Father, Jehovah, Lord our God, who is in heaven, Yahweh, the great I am. Father, we are so eternally grateful for the gift of life. Father, thank you so much that uh, you, you spared our lives once again up until this time. Thank you, my God, that through your Holy Spirit, you have led us throughout the day. You've met our needs. You gave us our daily bread. You protected us. Father, through the Holy Spirit, Father God, you've been our shepherd throughout the day. Thank you so much, my God, that you have allowed us as your family, as your community of believers to come to re-engage uh, Father God, in, in learning from your word. My Father, we, we ask in humility. Father, we pray that uh, every time we open your word, we open your scriptures, Father, we beg you that, Father God, please open up our eyes. My Father, I pray that you will help us to, to see what you desire us to see in your holy scriptures. I pray, my dear Heavenly Father, you will help us to, to see that you will reveal yourself through your word as to who you are, my God. Father, I pray that uh, you, your word, that your Holy Spirit will allow our, our hearts to be moved and to be changed by your word, Jehovah. I pray, my dear Heavenly Father God, that uh, we will bring uh, whatever areas in, in our lives that we, we feel like, God, we, we do not understand how you are working. That, Father, we will bring it to you, Father, and God, you will touch it and our eyes will be open to Jehovah. Father, thank you so much uh, for Jesus Christ. Thank you so much, my God, for, for your unconditional love. Uh, thank you so much that, Father, you, you constantly, my God, you are reaching out to us, that, God, you do not leave us nor forsake us. Thank you so much, my God, that you do not deal with us, nor treat us the way our sins deserve, but, God, you, you are kind and patient with us, leading us to repentance. And Father, we truly thank you so much for tonight's devotional. Father, we pray that the Holy Spirit, he will help us, that we, we will guard the word that you've planted in our hearts this evening. That, Father, we will guard it with all of our, with all of our might. We will guard it with all of our hearts. We will guard it with all of our strength, my God. We love you, Father. We pray all of this with gratitude, with faith and trust in Jesus mighty, wonderful, powerful, and beautiful name. Amen. 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 Awesome. Thank awesome. you very much. Thank you so much. Well, what an amazing message. Thank you so, so much. The message has been recorded. So if you want to listen to it again, uh, it will be on our Facebook channel, our YouTube channel. Uh, but again, thank you so much, Solly. Uh, and what a wonderful um a reminder to re-engage with Jesus. Uh, and I really pray as we all are uh, going through the New Testament together that God does something in our innermost being and uh, we all re-engage with Jesus. If you're visiting with us, I 
put the um, a plan in the chat box so you can download the PDF and follow along. Uh, if you're interested in personal Bible studies, we do that too, free of charge. So you're welcome to um, uh, contact us. Uh, Ronald, if you can please post uh, the contact link onto the chat box, uh, that would be very helpful if it's readily available. If you could do that, that'd be great. But again, thank you so much. Uh, this is the end of our midweek service. I have a, rest of, a wonderful rest of the evening and rest of the week. Uh, to God be the glory. Amen.